standoff. Welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, coming to you from Los Angeles. And we're going to have a really fun show for you today. Thank you for joining us. I think we can all agree that Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, and Buddy Guy are all masters of the blues. We know what makes them different from us, uh, but what makes them different from each other? what is unique about these these three players um today we thought we'd explore that idea with guitars in hand and try to show you some techniques and and tones that you can try to sound like these legends plus we've got a very special giveaway announcement later in the episode so please stick around help me out today is the stratospheric dinesh lacraj dinesh hey hey eugene how's it going man look at you and your new digs and everything man yeah buddy and you, man and i'm it, stoked to be here that Nagel painting, it's like 1984 all over again. It sure is. I just got to get Duran Duran to come and autograph it, right? <laughs> yeah, I believe her name is Rio. Um, and, <laughs> and of course, we also have our curriculum guru, Dylan Kalajuri, on hand. Hey! Dylan, are you there? Hello, world. Hello. Hello world. It's wonderful let's, to be here. It's wonderful to have you as always, Dylan. Uh, let's talk. Let's get to some guitars, though. Dinesh, what do you have and can you demonstrate it? Absolutely. Uh, this is my little Mexico, uh, made in Mexico Strat, 1996, 97. Oh. I just happened to stick a bunch of uh, old school Garbage Pail Kid stickers on there, man. It's a so. Garbage wow. Pail Strat. It's can, the can same you, guitar. Awesome. Can you hold it yeah. close to the camera so we can get an idea of the... That's I'll so, tell you guys, get an X-Acto knife and start sticking whatever. And uh, I didn't put a clear coat on it yet. So some of them are kind of peeling off, but it's my, my O to the 80s there. You know? Wow. Wow, between so, that and that Nagel I think it helps with tone, too. Well then, well let's 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 check that out. Let's test that. Let's hear it. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got a little overdrive here. Yeah. Ooh. Very very cool. And Dylan, nice. uh, what do you have? Uh, well, uh, this is a pretty special thing that I've got today. This is the Eric Clapton Strat. So nice. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but it's an incredible, it's an incredible piece of machinery here. Uh, it's, uh, I'll play it first Could so you play can hear it. it. So So one of the coolest things about this guitar is by far the pickups, it's noiseless pickups and, um, these particular noises pick, pickups have all the advantages of noiseless, but with none of the mid-range or tone treble things that some other noiseless pickups have problems with. So I, it, there's some serious craftsmanship in this thing. Uh, the radius of the neck, these are all specs, especially the uh, the uh, signature there on the headstock. So this is a definitely a killer beast. Does that and have that a, has a, a, mid, a mid boost on or a TVX right. boost or something, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Can we hear that demonstrated? Absolutely. You ready? So. So that was with it on. Yeah, that was with it on. Nice, yeah, it cuts nice. through. It's like a this thing will punch you in the face. You got to be careful. <laughs> uh, well, fellas, I'm excited about today's topic, and I hope you're ready to play a lot. Because uh, as I mentioned at the top, we're going to be exploring some techniques and tones that give blues players their unique style. Now, this is obviously a topic we could spend hours, if not days, on this. I, I know, uh, Dinesh, you and I, we, we think, hey, five-minute chat about the show before Wednesday, and then it turns into a half hour. Right. Um, Dylan, all of our conversations are like that. Um, <laughs> so, But today, we're just going to give you a taste. Uh, and if, but if you want to learn more, check out the links in the description uh, to Fender, to, sorry, check out the links in the description for links to Fender Play's Wealth of Blues lessons. I'm clearly reading that that'll help you learn more after the show. Also, if you have any questions for us throughout the episode, please drop them in the comments and we'll try to get to them. It's time to hear some guitar. We're going to start by diving into the, to three titans of blues, uh, Stuart Yvonne, Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy. Uh, but we'll uh, be mentioning other players along the way. You have to. Uh, Dinesh, let's start with the techniques of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Can you start us off with a taste of some of the telltale habits of the pride and joy of Austin? Absolutely, man. I think, if anything, let's start with this hand, uh, <laughs> your strum hand. And I think the biggest thing is we want to grab is the rake, really. Mm -hmm. um, that guy, you know. And I think just practicing that even with no notes, just even holding your hand down and just muting the strings lightly. Mm -hmm. 
So Rake's definitely number one, and I think we're all a fan of hearing some of the, the hammer-ons and pull-offs. <laughs> Those are the two things that really, I think, if I had to tell someone in a nutshell, you know, what you're looking for, I think, you know, getting the rake down is, is really one of the key things here, you know? I think you're right. The second I hear it, really, there's one guy I think of, and because yeah. he, 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 he put it in his playing so much. And it's interesting because, like, as, at one point, you're, you're just actually playing uh, or letting one note ring out in your fret hand, but you're going to hit all six to get there. Right. You're doing that there. Also, it sounds like it was almost like he's in in the in the shuffles, like uh, Pride and Joy, for instance. Pride and Joy. It's yeah. almost like he's mimicking the snare, the upbeat of a, of a shuffling snare. It's right. That upstroke that it's kind of it's continue that that uh, kind of that what's that flat tire beat sort of totally. Thing, as and and, and it being and being in a in a trio, I think that's something that a lot of trio based guitar players kind of do. I mean, even with Hendrix and stuff, like we noticed, mm -hmm. there's like. A rhythm playing so like if I played the same lick without that rake and now the rake I mean now we're we're, we're getting into that territory a little bit more right you know? otherwise cold shot would be <laughs> right. that's what it is without the rake yeah but with it's uh, It's especially that upstroke, that upbeat thing. Yeah. Oh, we, we have a relevant question already uh, from oh, Eric wow, okay. Silver. Oh, I, I think I know this guy. I believe he's a student of mine. Eric Silver from uh, from Brooklyn, I believe. Can wow. you talk about who influenced Stevie and how he adapted those influences? Dinesh, this is yours. That's a great question. Uh, you know, there's a guy that comes to mind, <laughs> Albert King. Yep. I didn't know this right away. I found out about Stevie Ray first. And then kind of backtracking and kind of, you know, hearing interviews and, and, and listening to him talk about Albert King, I went back and checked out what Albert King was all about. And, you know, uh, the main lick, there's a couple of main licks from Albert that we hear that Stevie adapts. And I think maybe, uh, you know, maybe refines or maybe builds off of, we want to say, but like, sure. you know, you've got the, um, the, um, <laughs> And I think Stevie really grabs that, and then, you know. I mean, it's really close. I've been hearing them both. You know, Albert's got the guitar flip, so he's actually pulling down on those E strings, uh, the, high, the high E strings, right? Right. It, 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 it should be noted, Albert King was left-handed, and he played, usually he played a, a flying V, but he didn't yeah. restring it for left hand, so it's strung just like this one. So if you were to take your guitar, as a right hand, and he hits a high E string, he's to get a big bend, he's pulling down the neck. He's doing this, pulling it towards the floor. Yeah. And he would consequently grab other strings on the way. And we get that real signature bend that we do mostly associate with Stevie, where, where Stevie would grab a couple of strings on the way. Yep. That's where that comes from. Very mm. specific. And after this episode, after everyone checks out the lessons on Fender Play, you're going to check it on YouTube. There's footage of Stevie and Albert sitting toe to toe playing. And it's very impressive. It's, it's very illuminating. If you never heard Albert King to hear him play and trade with Stevie and kudos to Stevie, first of all, for, to sit there and actually show all the secrets being revealed by the master. But then again, it just compliments Stevie that he did such a great job of capturing Albert and building from right. there. So yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great question, Eric. Thank you so much for that. Um, um, more techniques, more tips on, on uh, Stevie uh, in terms of his, uh, you talk about like that left hand, he, really heavy strings, right? Yeah, heavy strings. Um, and then, you know, the tone on the amps, you know, you're, you're basically trying to get, you know, he was known for using multiple amps and trying to get this big wall of sound mm -hmm. happening. So, you know, we're, whatever you're using, if you're trying to, if you have a clean amp or, um, you know, if you've even got like a Mustang amp, um, you can preset something to where you're trying to get a clean amp on the slight edge of breakup. Mm. Um, and you notice, you know, the cleanest that he gets stuff is maybe like when he's playing some of the, 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 the slower stuff. Yeah. There you go.
but even that still got like a little breakup. I'm using an overdrive to kind of push it. And you know, the thick strings, the rake, uh, uh, the right hand, it's like you were saying, Eugene, super rhythmic, the. <laughs> And that, that bass note going on with the rest of the, the playing in the same key, uh, another Hendrix thing just from having to be in a trio and cover that. You know, I'm still hitting that, that root note over the stuff I'm trying right, to play. He'll, he'll you know? use that, he'll put that thumb over the, yeah. top, over the top of the neck. Um, and uh, I want to, now I noticed you use the tremolo bar with, in a very convincing fashion and more than our other two players will talk about, Stevie would use that bar quite a bit, not just the ballads and the heavy. Can you play with the backing track and kind of yeah. show some of these techniques real quick? I mean, even it's just like 12 bars of it. Sure, okay. Let's see what I got here. Here we go. Yes, we do. Yeah, Dinesh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we see. Uh, so, okay, so now we're going to move on to Eric Clapton, and um, he. Uh, so we'll start like again with the right hand, as where Stevie will, will do that rake, and it's a real signature thing of his. Clapton was influenced very much by Freddie King, who we'll talk about in a moment. But um, yeah. therefore, he had a very he has a very precise uh, pick, uh, picking hand. His strum hand yes. is very precise. So uh, we will heart, we will just practically never hear Clapton do that rake. Um, and uh, much like Stevie, it's a lot of uh, pull-offs, hammer-ons, uh, a lot of pen minor pentatonic blues. Uh, Dylan, we'll get to you on that to explain what that is. But um, here's like an example. Let's say if we're in the key of, key of A, uh, Clapton, some, some typical moves of his. Um, those pull-offs. Yeah. To single note vibrato. Of course, the nickname Slow Hand yeah. comes from that single note vibrato that he had. Um, and, and also, he would do these flurry of, of hammer on pull off things and build up, he'll build up to a really big note. For instance, uh, let's see if I can. Um, sorry. Just, uh, for instance, it'd be like. Um, <laughs> So he kind of yeah. sets you up with a bunch of eighth notes or sixteenth notes, and then this big, long arcing note before he goes resolves back to his tonic, which I think is a really, really cool thing. Here's another thing that that Eric does, and I'm going to compare it to uh, Stevie. Uh, if we're playing a, a shuffle again, if we're in the key of A, when the changes go to the to the five chord, Stevie's very, very prone to, and I always thought this was very cool. Um, he he, uh, let's say. He'd play that B note over yes. the E chord. As where Clapton tends to, he, Clapton will never play that note, but he would, he'll, he'll lean on that Boogie Chitlin sort of thing. That, yes. That's what he would do over the five. And Buddy Guy, who we'll get to soon, will kind of do either or. But he ends up being a really nice combination of the two. Dylan, before we move on, can you tell us a little bit about the pentatonic uh, scale and how this figures in a big way to the three guys we're going to talk and and blues playing in in general. Absolutely, yeah. So basically, the pentatonic scale, uh, the minor pentatonic scale, is the same thing as the minor scale, but minus two notes. So I'll play the minor scale for you. you can hear it. Okay. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the same note again an octave away. Now I'm going to take away two notes 
and we'll end up with the pentatonic scale, hence the five note scale. Right. And then pass the octave. So basically what, what's happening there is we're limiting the amount of notes, which kind of mimics a more vocal line or a line where that someone might sing if they were going to skip some more notes more often, it makes it sound less stepwise. So mm -hmm. instead of... We have... So you end up hearing wider spaces between the notes. Uh, it's a scale that's thought to originate in Asia. You can make a pentatonic scale from any scale. So this is something that we talk about on the site and we talk about how to do some some uh, reductions of different, we go through all the modes, we go through every scale on the site. But um, one idea is at home, if you want a super big challenge is you take a scale like uh, the Aeolian scale and try making your own pentatonic scale. Or Mixolydian. So I'm just removing two notes from mm -hmm. each one of those modes, which are modes of the major scale, also talked about it on the site, and basically building my own pentatonic scale. So take that, I no. And <laughs> another thing I wanted to explain about the pentatonic scale that's really commonly used in both of these styles is the blues scale, right? So the blues scale is this addition of the blues note, which is the flat five. So when these guys are playing through, uh, these chord progressions and they're looking for a note that stands out and also sort of represents kind of the uh some of the outlawness of blues uh they're they're hitting a lot of the flat five notes so you've got and it's a really cool way to expand on your playing if you don't know either one of those check out the minor pentatonic scale the, the blue scale well. it's funny you bring that out because you're right because stevie and buddy will play that flat five note a lot clapton stays away from he'll bend past it usually but clapton does this great in the his famous uh solo to, to crossroads the live one he's going from the major pentatonic to the minor back and forth which i know stevie does quite quite a bit too and i think that's a really really i, I did it at the top of the show i it, over e i'm playing major then i went to the minor pentatonic so just right. to demonstrate that again real quick uh a major over e would be there's your major third right there Now that's minor. Yeah. So we're vastly between the major, yeah. the minor, back again, all within the same solo. So um, right. that's another, it's a real, real telltale thing that Clapton will do in any key. Uh, he'll generally start major, and then when he's ready to up the notch emotionally, he'll make it a minor third and the minor seven will show up uh it's it's he's, he's a, a really thoughtful player now regarding his tone clapton's had a lot of tone changes over the years he's had a long career when he first came to prominence he was playing a uh, guitar with humbuckers he's playing through a, a a combo tube amp and just pinning it um and he developed what they called the woman tone which basically was a bridge humbucker pickup with the tone rolled back. So first right. I have a strat here with it. And so that gives this really warm, and also he would just turn the bass all the way up on the amp and get this. And when you, if that's just one. What, the woman thing, I think what they got was when he would bend up to a note and the double stop. It sounds like a woman crying. Right. And then for, again, just to take it up a notch, he would then roll the, the, tr the, the tone up on the guitar, and then we get this really nice attack all of a sudden. So there we go. For instance, right? right. Uh, so uh, if you want here, let me, uh, where's, where's my backing track? Dylan, thank you so much for putting these backing tracks in. Oh, I, totally I want to thank the drummer from these two. Uh, Nate Lugaza played drums on these. You might oh, notice wow. the snare drum has a particular rang to it. So, Nate, excellent. Yeah. Way to go, Nate. Here's some yeah. Clapton uh, stuff kind of over the backing track real quick. Okay. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Then the band changes yeah. keys there. Sorry, well, you know, a couple of flub notes there. I was worried I was going to drop my phone. Um, so, so that's. I, I want to add one thing to what you're saying, Eugene, because like what you're spelling out about Clapton is incredible. And if people, if anybody out there already knows the minor pentatonic scale, so let's say in the key of A, if you know that shape, then you know where a lot of what we're playing is coming from. If you start right. that same shape with your pinky on A. just played the A major pentatonic scale. So from the fifth yeah. fret in the key of A playing in A minor, if I put my yeah. pinky on the fifth fret and play the exact same shape, I've got A major pentatonic. So you can actually just start your foyer into the major pentatonic scale like tonight, if you want to. Boy, Check out the site. Master. So Clapton then, of course, moves over to Stratocasters and and gets a different tone. And uh, in that case, usually when, when he plays blues on a on a on a, a Strat, he's usually going to the front pickup mm. and uh, uses kind of a different thing. And then he goes for the, It's still a really warm tone. Ending on that major third. Okay, let's move to Buddy Guy. We'll get back to Eric a little later. Uh, Dinesh, I'm going to hand the uh, the platform back to you, buddy. What can you tell us about Absolutely. Buddy Guy in terms of the techniques and tones? You know, it's funny, man. Buddy Guy, is, is, he's like a wild card, mm -hmm. you know? Master showman. I think a lot of his playing has to do with just the vibe and what's going on with the song. Very dynamic, up and down. You got to remember, Buddy is just basically, the amp is pretty much cranked, and he's using the volume knob on the guitar. So I can't right. crank my amp right now because my neighbors would not dig that. <laughs> uh, so I've got an overdrive pedal on, and I'll give you guys a little something about that. Uh, super showman again, but there's a couple of things, you know, again, pentatonic scale, all these guys share this same uh, uh, scale and notes. And, and um, so Buddy, if I'm going to go from like Stevie to Buddy, let's say, for example, Stevie's going, you know, Buddy's going to be, you know, either it's going to be um, front pickup on the Strat, as we say, bridge, or it could mm -hmm. be something like uh, Damn Right, I Got the Blues, which is on Fender Play. We, we got something where it's like. And he's kind of ending those with like a double hit there. You know what I mean? And he's just got like him. this like. Ugh, like you know he just kind of like hits and yeah. um i'm not trying to say there's not a ra he does rake too um but like you know and he'll you know he'll he'll turn it down to clean it up and then he's i, I love the fact that he'll just go outside <laughs> You know what I mean? And and I kind of like, I mean, if you ever see any live footage out there, it's just like you never know what's going to happen. But a um, lot of influence, of course, on, on Stevie and, and um, you know, Hendrix and all that. But I think mm -hmm. the main thing is if you can just kind of grab some of the tones and, and just remember that this hand, instead of the rake or like Clapton where it's a little more controlled, you know. <laughs> Buddy's kind of somewhere in this kind of wild card zone. <laughs> you know, and That's then great. he might do like a, you know, he might pull out the old drumstick or something and then we, we got a whole other wild card. <laughs> Just like, you know, all of a sudden you're at, and walking into the crowd and he's like yeah. playing for like 20 minutes at the wireless. Um, so he, he's <laughs> one of my faves when it comes to that. It's just like no rules apply here. You know? That's wonderful. You know, and, and so uh, in, in terms of comparing these plays, actually, if you look at his uh, buddy's strats closely, usually there's a yeah. lot of wear at the bottom of his, of the neck because then he right. does a lot of hard picking right around here. In right around there. Yeah. Kind of unusual. Also, Clapton and Buddy uh, playing strats, they tend they use maple uh, fingerboards. And fretboards. 
Mm-hmm. Stevie always had Rosewood for the most part. Rosewood, and then mm-hmm. I think oh, there was like the Lenny Strat, which was the 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 Maple. Which yeah, what what really? But his first choices was always a Rosewood. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So and for the real discerning ear, that kind of ends up being a gear question. So, uh, most, a lot of people feel that Maple fretboards are brighter. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a little, little kind of more more attack, right? Not as much as a little faster on the attack, a little, fa- yeah. a little faster on the attack, as where the rosewoods a little smoother and deeper in tone. That's kind of yes. something that comes up. Now, a uh, question coming from YouTube. This is from T Town Scott. Uh, uh, Dinesh, uh, you take this one. Yeah. Is a Strat or Tele better for blues? I think they're both great for blues. Really, I mean, yeah. Albert Collins Telecaster, Muddy Waters you know? Telecaster. Yeah. Yeah, Muddy Waters, I mean, man, um, and, and I mean, I think either one is great. I mean, I think, obviously, uh, if you're trying to grab some of these player vibes, a Strat would be preferable, but I mean, if you have a Tele, you could still do it too, like going mm-hmm. back to the woman tone. Even if you have a Strat, single coils, or Tele, as long as you can roll that tone knob back, you right. know, you're still in the game a little bit, you know? Um, right. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I think you're fine either way. If it's whatever you're most comfortable with, you know? I mean, I, don't ask me. I own a, a bunch. Of, we all own a bunch of guitars, so we're all <laughs> going to tell you, like, buy one of each because they're each one is a, is a different story, you know? But a lot of our favorite uh, players only have... I think you had... could totally do it with the with the, a, a telly as well. Yeah, sorry to speak over you, but a lot of our favorite players just had that one guitar, and they made that work for them. And right. That, that may be your solution, too. Uh, Dylan, a bit of a, a technique question here for you. Yeah. Uh, someone's asked... Oh, actually, well, the question was, how do you bend... Uh, a string in tune that's a great question it's really hard when you're first learning how to do Mm -hmm. this and we've got a lot of lessons on play about it but uh let's say i'm gonna bend this eighth fret of the second string and i want to do what's called a full step bend i want to hear the sound of the tenth fret so basically the an initial practice could just be bending yeah and comparison yeah first fret the note that you want to hear right yes that way you know the goal the pitch that, that is your goal, right? Yeah. That's right. So. That's correct. And you could do it literally maybe going through the pentatonic scale. And just listening to every one of your pitch, your goal pitches, yeah. as you said. And, um, and if your ear's not developed yet, if you have a clip-on tuner, you might want to just check against that. That's kind of like a great cheat right there. It's just I, I have one on the back of my neck here, and it's just like mm-hmm. that's fu- that's you can kind of just see what that fret and note was and see if you're hitting it. Um, before uh, until you Hacking. get that ear to, to, to get in in tune with everything. You know? Here's another one from Facebook. Um, Dario Puig is asking heavy strings. Why? So uh, Dinesh, this probably goes back to Stevie Ray Vaughan, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, heavy strings. It's going to be a, 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 a thicker sound, more bass. You're going to get more mid range. Um, you know, I, I don't think, you know, it, it's definitely not a must have. I think you should definitely go with what's comfortable for you. Like mm-hmm. I've got tens on and I know Eugene, you play 11s in standard, which that's a little tough for me. Mm. That's I would what, have to tune what, those down. It's, you what know? Buddy, it's what Buddy, buddy Guy uses 11s. Buddy Guy, uh, yeah. Clap, I think Clapton uses 10s such as, as Clapton yourself. Clapton uses 10s. So um, now, um, but yeah, I think that, that those really heavy strings, obviously when we, when we pluck a string, we're, that string is moving in, a, in really a figure eight pattern. Yeah. And the pickups are going to pick up that, that, that movement and transmit that. Well, it's a whole technical thing. It goes to the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. But that bigger string, it's, it's a bigger row. It's a bigger figure eight pattern technically. Mm, right. So that's just a lot of signal. And so that's kind of why some people use heavier. I know in the Dwight band we'll use for rhythm. Some mm-hmm. of our electrics have... Uh, 12s or 13s, something crazy that we play for them. Right. It's just a big, big sound, but I'm not expecting to bend or anything like that. So. Sure, and it might also depend on if someone's got a heavy hand or not. Like if you're a heavy hitter, you may benefit from heavy strings just because sometimes when you hit strings too hard, they could kind of sound like they're going out of tune and then they kind of come back. So I think it's you know t- the best to work with what's comfortable for you. You know, you can always dial in the amp and guitar to make up for some of that stuff, too. You know, uh, yeah. add more bass, add a little less treble, or add some more mids, you know. Um, well, that's the thing. You know, Clapton would, would turn the bass all the way up on his amp. Buddy Guy would play a, a bassman and turn the treble and presence and mid all the way up and turn all the bass up. all the way 
the base was yeah. turned all the way off. So there's some yeah. extreme things you can do there. Um, and if you have a modeling amp, that's kind of, if you don't have a lot of pedals and things, that's kind of thing. Just take a, take a basement and, and start there. Or if you're yeah. modeling a, you know, a, a, a Fender Twin, something like that, and just play with that EQ, you might find yourself falling into these tones. Here's a great last question because we're, we're already almost out of time, guys. Oh, wow. In the Facebook community, uh, here's the question. Hello. So as a beginner in speaking of Clapton, Buddy, and SRV, did they actually take theory lessons such as this and much more? Or mm. did they have a grasp and gift for the general sounds on the fretboard? Because this seems very confusing learning shapes and scales. Fellas, have at it. Man, I know. I just, you know, Buddy and, and Stevie, man, they were just guys that were just kind of, you know, picking it up as they were going. They were listening to records. They were listening to other players. Uh, I don't think a lot of these guys had the benefit of lessons and stuff, which is what's so great now, because now that can really speed up the process for a lot of different mm -hmm. things, you know. But, I mean, a lot of those guys were just trying to emulate what they were hearing. And I think shapes might have come to mind, uh, you know, maybe going to see, like, one of their favorite players and watching things and then mm -hmm. going home and trying to, like, recreate that stuff. Sure, you know? that makes sense. So I guess uh, to answer the question, you know, it's one of those things where you're going to want to listen to this genre a lot. Get it in yeah. you via your ears. And then the shapes and those things are, are really starting points. I think it was. Um, oh, guys, I, I want to add one thing yeah, to that, yeah, exactly. which is, Don't. hello, beginner. Uh, first of all, you come to the right place. Also, I, I think one thing you should do is reward yourself along the path every time you figure out any type of new sound or you catch any type of, maybe you learn how to dance. <laughs> Or you learn how to acknowledge that you are getting closer to this goal of learning about Clapton and Buddy and yes. SRV because I realize it is a lot to know. But yeah. boy, it's really the journey of learning this that is actually the fun part because the arrival just, you know, then you want to know something else. So right. um, you're on the best part of this path. And so don't don't be dismayed. Right. You'll I mean, even if it's a simple oh. lick, like yeah. it doesn't even have to be anything fancy as long as you can just do. Yeah, that that's right it. there. That's killing. That, that's what we're trying to demonstrate here. It's just, you know. Even like the scale, if you're just playing the scale over a 12 bar progression, you'll find that those notes are going to start working. And then when you try to add vibrato and try to add a little, um, you know, a bend here and there, that's mm -hmm. really going to come alive. That's yeah. really going to come alive. Let's yeah. wrap it up with some more playing. Dylan, how about you take a crack over that backing track and, and, okay, and yeah. show us what you know about the blues or, or and try and take that Clapton uh, signature strat and uh, show off a little bit. All right, let's see. <laughs> Jazzy, yeah. could you? Yeah. Almost. Thank you. Guys. You okay? You need a nap? I might need. Right a, I might need a moment to collect myself. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Cool your jets, Dinesh. Why don't you take one more crack with a backing track? Take us out. Let's uh, here. do it. I, I'm gonna mix a little of those guys. Let, I'm gonna try and mix all these guys yeah, together. Yeah, it's fun. As best yeah. As Let's I do can. it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw it all together here, guys. My. Because man, there's so many great places to go. Let's just go for it here. Let's start with some Stevie. <laughs> Maybe some buddy.
by the way, great trick. If the guitar goes a little out of tune and you're floating, just bring that whammy bar back. Brings it all <laughs> snapped in there. So that was not really clear. that I was using it, but you know, that's, that's definitely funny. a little uh, safety net there. Dinesh, that was an absolute clinic, man. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Uh, look, we're going to move on to the homework now. But again, we could have just gone on for hours. Thank you so much for your questions. Please remember to go to the site. We've got a lot of information there to help you get started in playing the blues. Um, I guess I'll assign the homework. Uh, for the beginner, learn the blues shuffle basics. That's on the site. It's uh, for the beginners right there. Really gets you uh, working in, in, in the in the groove that most blues exist, which is in the shuffle rhythm. For the intermediate, yeah. learn the riff and progression to Buddy Guy's Damn Right I've Got the Blues. And for the advanced, learn Sever Avon's Cold Shot at Tempo. Awesome. That's great. And that's a groovy one. That's a real deep pocket. It's yeah. a lot of fun to play. Okay. It's time we get to some Fender Play updates and most importantly, what everybody's been waiting for, the giveaway winner announcement. Oh, Dylan, please take it away. All right. Well, this has been an awesome show, you guys. And everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. So if you haven't tuned in before, we do a giveaway every week. And uh, if you're a member of Fender Play, you're automatically entered in to win as long as you get a streak, which is three seven-minute sessions. And you get to pick from guitar and amp or uh pedals all kinds of stuff right so uh is everybody ready to hear the winner for this week i am that mean the drum roll is it time for yeah give roll? me something give me some give me some yeah. kind of noise uh, it's jeff r jeff r right. yeah yeah and that's the very upscale jeff with a g by the way <laughs> nice right. it's so. the, the queen's jeff well congrats to, right. uh, to you jeff and enjoy your new guitar bass amp, whatever it is that you choose. Also, you've got another giveaway to tell us about, Dylan. Yeah, so very special show next week. I, I hope all of you can be here and you bring all of your friends because we're going to have Larkin Poe back. Yay! So if you didn't catch Larkin Poe, this is one of our absolute favorite guests. They're amazing. They yeah. are so good. Um, but we're also going to be giving away some incredible hol holiday gear. So you have a chance to win. Let me just... <clears throat> um, Ooh, that is an Ugly Christmas sweater. Are you what? This is one of my <laughs> finest pieces. Sorry. Um, no, so you've got a chance to win an ugly sweater, uh, as well as um, the grand prize, which is going to be a buttercream humbucker single single player strat. Mm -hmm. This is the performer, but oh. essentially it's this. It's single single humbucker in buttercream. This base here is buttercream. Just to, so as you a mix display. those two together so with the buttercream. Combine the, yeah, you get I'm that. hungry. And so uh, we're also giving away picks and straps and all kinds of stuff. Next week's show is a big one. It's our last one of the year. Please come and see us. We love that you guys spend time with us. Your time is precious, and you come and see us anyways, and we really appreciate it. But you got to come next week, too. Okay, that's it. But, uh, no, the picks, are the picks going to be like in, in like Christmas colors and stuff, holiday colors and stuff? I'm going to work on that. Uh, Eugene, cool. I will get that up the ladder, and we'll get, make sure that gets done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please do. So, uh, yeah, enter at the link in the description. Um, well, uh, and Dylan, uh, any f uh, Fender Play updates to the site? Yeah, so uh, we've got a, this is like a big, exciting day for me. I've been kind of jiggling all day long. Uh, we've got a big, <laughs> exciting thing that happened. So for those that aren't aware, Fender has a Tune app. It's called Fender Tune. If you didn't know, you should definitely go and get it as soon as possible. And we just made an exciting update this week that I want to tell you guys about. We're now offering Fender Tune Plus for free. So Ooh. Tune Plus is an incredible practice toolkit for players of all levels. So there's an interactive chord and scale library. Let me let me pull this up here so I can show you guys. Hopefully you can see this. So here's a great example of um, of the of how the chords look on screen. I don't know if you can see that. Huh? Beautiful. Yeah, I can. Yeah. And then I'll give you an example of the scales. So literally all the all the scales that we were talking about today, we're talking about thousands of chords, thousands of scales, scales you don't even want to know. <laughs> there's too much stuff. Uh, so uh, there's also a metronome. There's tons of drum tracks on there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be as good as Nate's. No, they're better. Uh, so you guys have got to check this out. There's so much stuff. And if you're an advanced player, we've got a pro tuner, a pro tuner on there. So it's a precision tuner. All you need to do is download the app or update if you already have it and uh, sign into your Fender Connect and you're ready to go. This thing's amazing. Don't miss it. Another new thing that's on the site that I cannot fail to mention. We've got heavyweights today. We've got C-Ray Vaughn. We've got... Uh, Eric Clapton, buddy guy. We're talking about all these amazing people. Well, we've got the Beatles collection, which is up on the site. It's got a bunch of incredible songs in it, right, Eugene? That's I right. That I saw her standing there uh, for you, Blue. I mean, there's all kinds of deep dives on these Beatles songs. If you want to get crazy, if you just want to tiptoe in, every different style and every learning ability is accommodated in that collection. So 
do go and check it out as soon as possible, and I will stop now. Oh, that was a, that's a lot to get us over the holidays, though. Thank you very much, Dylan, and thank you to all the uh, all the merry elves there at Fender for your <laughs> generosity. Uh, thank you, Dinesh. Uh, tell us what you have going on these days. Yeah, absolutely, man. Dude, thanks again for having me. This was a great episode. I mean, my favorite people to talk about with my favorite people here, of course. Oh. Uh, man, you know, we're just doing, um, I moved recently here to New Orleans. My favorite city on the planet, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. so I'm enjoying things here and it's super great. And I hear blues on the radio, I hear jazz everywhere. It's, it's, mm. it's awesome. I've got LA Guitar Guru where we do, um, you know, lessons and help people find gear. And I also uh, manage the Mesa Boogie uh, Hollywood showroom. So I'm, I'm keeping, uh, keeping busy and I'm cool. um, just um, looking forward to, uh, you know, doing more stuff and playing as much as possible. And, and like I said, always a great time to be here and talk about some of these people that have just influenced all of us, you know. It's, it's been a great hang. And thank yeah. you everyone for watching. Um, thank you, Dylan, for all your help. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be next, uh, back next week with another episode. Larkin Poe will be here. But <laughs> in the meantime, everyone, please keep safe, keep practicing, and we will see you on the G chord, everybody. And Dinesh, you, you take the lead here. We're, Dylan and I are just going to hold the G chord. One, two, three, <laughs> four. <laughs> Thank you.